welcome back. Well, with the drainage all done now, I'm finally getting on to starting the structural build. So in the last video, I drilled the plates out and I've got them positioned here. And you can see one of the rebars where it sits in that concrete just to see how close it is to the holes. So the first thing I do is position all the plates with my string lines and then run a masonry drill just as a pilot hole just so that I can mark for sure where all the holes are going to go. I'm using chemical anchors. They're 16 millimeter high tensile class 8.8. This is the drill I'm using which is 18 mil so it's a clearance hole and I'm using a Hilti epoxy product. So I'll go around, I'll drill all these holes, they're just under 200 millimetres deep and I've just put that bit of tape on there just so that I know the depth because there's no need to drill it deeper than what you need because you just end up using more chemical. They drilled pretty good actually, when I thought about this I was thinking if it was one continuous hole, I had 70 holes, 200 mils about 14 meters <laughs> so uh, it took uh, a shorter amount of time once I actually did it so there's the the anchor you just rotate them in as you go now these are the drills so on the left there's a standard drill and on the right is the one I'm going to use and you can see the cross piece versus just the single carbide and the main advantage of that is if you're unfortunate to hit the rebar which I do here that higher quality drill will actually drill right through that rebar so what you do is you slow your drill down and you'll see here it starts to wobble around a bit and that's just where it's uh, actually eating through that rebar and it goes through and you can continue on with a standard drill you're going to have all sorts of problems so bear that in mind it's worth the extra money for a good drill bit once they're all drilled you've got to blow it down make sure you've got a good respirator because you don't want to go breathing dust from concrete. This concrete's quite hard, it's 32 megapascal as well. And to get the benefit out of the chemical adhesive, you really need this to be clean. So you blow it out. There's a few ways you can do it, but I'm using compressed air. And the epoxy is Hilti RE500, which is their ultimate strength epoxy. Uh, this is a completely engineered structure, and this is what's specified. So. Make sure that the pack is in good nick, it's not cut or anything, and it's within the use by date. And just so you know, the end cap here just gets removed, you put the nozzle on, you don't need to do anything inside there, don't cut anything, it'll just simply release the epoxy itself once you start uh, to apply pressure through the handle. So you just slide it in, take the cap off, and screw the nozzle on, and you're basically ready to go. Now for this job, I needed about six, nearly seven of those tubes, so they're 500 mil tubes. They're not cheap, so the main thing is do it properly, get planned, get a good plan, and you'll be fine. Last thing you gotta do is you gotta wire brush these out. Now, I wasn't sure how much extra dust was gonna come out. This is a, the proper Hilti wire brush, which probably doesn't make a lot of difference, but I must say I was surprised on how much extra dust I got out, and obviously that's gonna help form a much stronger bond. Now once you're ready, apply the epoxy, and once you do that, you, you move the gun up as you release it, and you need to work out yourself, but this is about three pumps per hole. The hole is a little bit over half full, and when you put the stud down there, uh, you soon know if you've got enough or not from what oozes out, and it didn't take long to figure out the, the right amount for these holes. So you put them in, you do rotate them just a little bit, You've got about um, 20 minutes, I would say, 15, 20 minutes, depending on the temperature where it's still workable. So what I do is I position them all. I just cleaned that little bit of epoxy off with, with a glove. And then while it was still workable, I, I gently put the plate on and made sure that the bolt holes were going to line up. So here's just another one so you can get a, an idea of the process. So about three pumps but as I said it's hole specific and it's going to depend on a few factors. As of the next day they're all set depending again on the temperature it can be 6 to 12 or 24 hours to fully cure so these are fully cured it's been quite warm. I put the plates on just nip them down so they're ready 
to start fabricating the column so you can see the string line there is the edge of where the column's going to go that i beam set there is for the trusses and these rhs's are for the main columns so i've got two thicknesses the blue ones are four millimeters thick they're 150 by 100 by four mil and i bought myself this evolution saw because i had a abrasive saw and it just doesn't cut straight so this is the first cut with this saw and I've got to say it's amazing uh, the best thing about this is no dust no sparks literally no sparks and just so clean a cut Holy smoke, look at that. That is absolutely amazing. Wow, man. What a cut. I'm impressed. So well done Evolution on a great saw. I'm, I'm not sponsored, I've got nothing to do with Evolution, but uh, I'll give it a test, second time, 20 degrees for matching the pitch of the roof, and it goes through that, again, no problem. And then I thought it put a bit harder test. Now to be honest, this must be pushing the limits of the, of the system, because it's quite a big bit of metal in there. Now this is for the columns that support my uh, lifting beam so this is 150 by 100 by 6 millimeters and again it was no problem and the thing I like most is just how straight it is so yeah awesome saw there are blades I believe for stainless steel mold steel and aluminium and this particular blade I got I got it with a stainless blade so I, I bought a different blade to do this mold steel now I use my excavator to lift these columns into position and I've got my string lines there and I just butt the edges up right onto that string line and then tack it into position. Now as I said this is a full custom build. Uh, these are structural welds so this is equivalent to a 7018 rod. So there's the four end posts so the two on both ends are up now. They're just tacked and um, they're not going anywhere. So again, just showing how we lifted these beams up. So this is one side nearly done. Now it is really worth the effort of getting these nice and straight because it's gonna make the rest of the build so much easier when it comes to putting that, the cladding on and the walls together. So that was the last column for that side and you can see they've just lined up perfectly. I was really, really happy with that. Now with them all done, it was time to just go around and fully weld them. So depending on the on the beam, this shorter edge, there's no problem just to weld straight across, but the longer edge on some of the beams, I welded a couple of inches at a time and swapped sides just to make sure that I didn't pull the beam over too far and I really wanted to keep it as square as possible. So you see on this one, I weld probably two inches here and then I cross over to the other side and then I just went around and finally finished welding all of them. So this is the thicker beam running about 130 amps with a 3.2 mil rod. So really happy with that. It's definitely nice and solid. So these are all the columns up for the main area. I still have the lean-to section to do at a bit later date. The next stage is gonna be starting to work on the trusses for this main area, which will be those I-beams. If you have any questions, put them down in the comment section and I'll see you in the next video.